welcome back. And I know it's getting near the end of the day for some of you, might even be the evening for others. I think out of the three of us, we've got Germany, New York, and Western Canada represented. So lots of different time zones. Uh, hope you're enjoying yourself. It's been a fabulous day of learning so far. And I know this next session will be extremely valuable for anyone in communications as Frank Wolf, co-founder and president at StaffBase, is about to hand us a strategic and modern plan to transform our internal comm strategy. So I'm getting ready to take notes and I'll turn over the stage to Jeff Corbin. Welcome back and to Frank Wolf from StaffBase. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank so you. Uh, great to be here. Uh, great to talk about uh, modern internal comm strategy. And I have to admit, I'm a bit uh, really excited because it's sort of also something I worked for on on, on the last yeah six months now. So uh, yeah, Jeff, let's see if we if we have uh, half an hour to to cover everything here, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if there's a lag in the. It might sound here. Hold on one second. Okay. Test. Can you hear us? Hello. So it seems like Jeff has a sound problem. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. I'm hearing a, can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, we can hear okay. you. I can hear I, you very well. Okay, good. Well, uh, sorry about that. There was something a little confusing going on, a little uh, back loud round sound. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'm Jeff Corbin. I'm the uh, senior strategic consultant for internal communications at StaffBase. Um, I'm really quite uh, proud to uh, and honored to be on the stage with Frank, um, who I've gotten to know over the past several years. Um, I had founded a mobile app technology company, as had he. Um, I like to think of myself as the one of the pioneers of employee apps in the US and certainly Frank and Martin and his team at StaffBase are uh, the uh, the pioneers in Europe. So uh, very, very important subject that we're going to be talking about today, one that Frank and I have spent many, many uh, years debating with each other. I think we are in quite uh, agreement as to uh, the importance of having a internal comm strategy. And Frank has a, a new model that uh, he's developed that I think is really uh, something that is exciting for us. Sounds great. Uh, really great and honored to be here, Jeff. And I think uh, uh, maybe to kick this off, uh, I wanted to start off uh, to, to show one thing uh, as uh, I, I guess most of you also uh, Google a lot about uh, internal comms uh, uh, stuff and uh, we we all want to be data driven so let's start to be data driven if you go to google if you start to to type internal communication google will give you a recommendation of what other people are looking for and very much on the top is is all things around definition okay it's number one but then you get strategy examples plan templates so Everyone is searching for what's a part of comms, what's a part of a communication strategy, give me a template, give me an idea what I should do, what's part of the job of a communications professional. And I think that's a question a lot of teams have, especially also people that are new in the role, but also especially because the role is changing so much. And I think that's the goal to discuss this today. And uh, yeah, uh, show you a bit more uh, also on how you can do a, a, a assessment on that. Great. So our agenda for today, uh, four things we wanna go over and hopefully we'll have enough time to, to do so. Uh, the first and most important is why do we need an internal communication strategy? Um, then we're going to get into the new internal comm strategy model that Frank has helped to develop. Um, there is this interesting test that uh, StaffBase has developed, has me a little scared. I'm afraid to take it, but um, how can we score how we're doing in internal communications? And lastly, some very practical examples of what we can do and what you all can take back to uh, your work to, uh, to be successful in implementing the internal comm strategy. 
Fantastic. And Jeff, there's no no reason to be scared. Uh, we will talk about <laughs> this. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to explain what's in there. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, hopefully uh, all of you go out of the session and, and are saying, yeah, I'm ready to take the test. And I, I, I want to see uh, what's in there. Uh, actually, to, to kick this off, like why you need an IC strategy, um, I, I know many that are, that are watching here know why they need a strategy, especially also to plan things, to align a team, um, and, and to be able to actually know what you're doing uh, throughout the year. But I wanted to add maybe one other perspective that I personally find really, uh, uh, yeah, of, of a lot of value for the comms team, because a lot of uh, communication professionals are in constant discussions for resources. How do I get more budget? How do I get more influence? Um, how can I position my team with leadership and in the organization? And I think it's quite uh, interesting to understand and important to say a lot of what's coming out of this resource discussion is actually based on the level of influence that you can build up in your in your role and in your function. And the level of influence is uh, also uh, very much dependent on the role that the communication team has in the company. And it's quite interesting because this role has really been changing over the last couple of years. Um, it's it's uh, started off as more of a content producer role of like an internal journalist, but in, in many cases, content producer role. And as these comms teams are more evolving, they are coming more into a behavior driver role. Uh, you see this because your goals are changing from just producing content to really what are outcomes, what's uh, behavior that you're changing, how are surveys uh, showing different attitudes that you're driving, and they are move on to a more uh, support role and to a more enablement role for others to communicate better, especially leadership, but also local leaders influencers and, and key employees that are important for internal communication. And it goes on to say internal communication actually builds assets like company culture. The most advanced companies in that regard really see company culture as an asset and comms drives to develop these assets. And all of this is kind of coming back from the resources. The more resources you get, the higher and more ambitious you can define your role as a, as a comms uh, team. And if you look at uh, influence drivers, what are sources of influence uh, for communications team? Of course, you see things there like uh, your skills, like uh, how are you able to tell a story? How are you able to uh, develop messaging around a certain narrative and strategic goal? Knowledge about, for instance, the internal audience that you're driving, your internal network, your role as a trusted advisor, and even external factors like the COVID pandemic for many comms teams, it increased the influence because a crisis usually increases influence of, of the internal comms uh, department. But the point that we want to make here is a strategy, having a strategy, being able to put this up, being able to show it to leaders, to your team, and in general to the organization, that's really a big driver also of influence because uh, it, it shows that you thought about this, that you know what you want to do in your role and that you are strategic. So I think that's that's an aspect that uh, is is quite important and helpful here. Yeah, and and I would just you know just thinking about what you just said, Frank. <clears throat> you know, the the, the challenge that um, I've seen most I see internal comms professionals have is figuring out what they need to present. And you know, yes, we kind of know that we want to demonstrate the value of our work, but how how do we do it? And I think that this kind of gives you a good feeling for some of the things to think about that you can then go to the C-suite and to others in the organization and present. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the, the challenge is, and I, sh I showed Google, um, if you go to Google, if you Google for comm strategy, you get, uh, here's the easy template, here's, the, here's a one-page template uh, for comm strategy, sometimes with, here's the message, uh, here's the audience, and here's the timing. But to be honest, that might be helpful for part of this, but that's not a full strategy. It doesn't help you to really understand and see like what's really part of my job. If I look at the year, what should I do? Where should I focus my energy? And our goal was to say, okay, can we have an easy overview on what's part of this, right? 
and the yeah the first thing is for if you if you do that you you go to research and you say okay what's out there uh, and what's out there is obviously and I think that's the good news there's a lot of knowledge out there a lot of authors and practitioners have written about internal communications there's a lot of great formats like uh, Katie's uh, podcast which uh, I attended uh, for instance last last year um, there's a lot of research out there a lot of studies uh, I hope you all for instance, know the state of the sector by Gallic, or it's a fantastic yearly study with great insights. So if you didn't see this, uh, go to Gallagher and uh, uh, download this. Um, there's a very long running study in Europe. It's called the European Communication Monitor, which is uh, quite interesting for different aspects because they really uh, in detail comps benchmarking um, across uh, a lot of uh, quite functions. Uh, with maybe one very interesting part, they do a yearly uh, salary benchmark. So if you want to get more money um, and if you want to have data uh, about what others are earning in your role, uh, check this one out. All of these are free and uh, easy to download on the web. And we are, um, as an organization, doing a lot of service by ourselves uh, with other partners, and we are also doing surveys uh, with our customers. So we look into data what actually works well in communication and what are the, the real engagement drivers that are important uh, to, to be uh, looked at, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that um, when I joined Staff Base, which was in September of last year, I, I knew that we had a huge amount of information available to us. And you can see on this slide, um, we put out earlier this year a internal communications retrospective that kind of looked at um, how the COVID pandemic uh, affected employee engagement and the role of internal comms in, in, in that conversation. So, you know, there's so much data that's now available that we at Staff Base are, are looking at because we know that if we can draw a, a direct correlation between uh, the content that's created by our by our customers and employee engagement, that that could be very, very significant. There could be some really important learnings that can come out of that. And that's... I think that's quite important to make this sure. Um, looking at this model that we are about to present, it's nothing where we say, hey, we've seen it all, we know it all, right? We are the smartest. It's just we realize, hey, we are in a pretty interesting position, right? Because we see all the research. We have the resources to actually look into it. Uh, we see a lot of, we have 1,000 customers now. We have a lot of these stories. We see what's actually working. And what's quite also interesting, and you are in New York, I'm here in Germany, there's a lot of research and, 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 and knowledge in, for instance, in North America about the topic, but there's a huge, a ton of research in Europe about the topic. And it's so good to see this in both markets and bring this together and really say like, what's, what's working? Because especially also both uh, markets can really learn from each other. And that's our goal here, bring this together, and bring this all into uh, a model that we call the internal communication strategy model. Um, maybe I kick this off with a like easy overview of what it is and happy to go into all the details, but I guess we don't have <clears throat> too much time for this. Basically, uh, the goal is to say what's part of the job. And what's part of the job is, is obviously uh, it's something to build a strategy. It's something to do the core job of communicate. Uh, then you have a big part that gets bigger and bigger with every year is employee engagement and doing actually to, to have the dialogue, having the interaction, having um, providing the value for employees and, and think about the employee experience, something we haven't done too much five years ago, 10 years ago in these models, and also optimization. And, and a lot in this model is also driven by what's happening with with new digital channels uh, that we are seeing we have more channels but on the other hand we can measure things better and so a lot of the tasks that comms actually has have changed in the last couple of years and we said if we have a model here it should reflect that and should really have those areas in there that that are actually part of the job and really need to be done let, let me ask you a question frank um what this is very new to me. Um, what other models are out there currently um, 
you know, that maybe this should be sit beside or, um, you know, what, what's new about this as in relation to any others that previously existed? I think there are a couple of dimensions. At the, the most important from our perspective first, there are some sort of uh, scientific models out there based for real scientific research, which are way more complex, where we said it, it's too complex. You can't really like work with it, especially if you want to do things like a self-assessment or a maturity score. Like that's it's it's just not workable, um, and also these a lot of these traditional scientific models they entirely ignore the whole employee engagement part. Mm. They think about comms as a fire and forget functionality, where you say I send out the message, maybe I get a feedback, but that's it. I don't care about employee experience if people actually are even tuning into my channel. Uh, like what's the context that they have as, as part of this? I don't care about personalization, other things. So it was a very much top-down driven approach. That's I think that's one thing. And the other thing that's that's new, and there are a couple of examples in here, uh, there's a much bigger part of the enablement role that, that comms is playing. Um, it's not just leadership enablement, it's enablement of all, in many cases, decentral functions like decentral content champions, like, like a, a in a plant or a site or factory where you want to enable people to communicate by themselves. Uh, there's the content planning aspect. That's, that's, a, that's a big topic. I will talk about this in a second uh, in, a, in a, a smaller deep dive here. And also what we talked about, the responsibility and role aspect, like understand what the role is and moving away from just being a content producer to being a behavior driver, um, as an example. And there's a uh, aspect that's that's uh, in many cases is missing is the communication team development. You know, as you say, sharpen the saw, like know what competences you need around also agile methods, around moderation techniques, and also around storytelling at the, about new media formats and so on. So that's all things that we wanted to bring in here to really make this a modern comms model. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I what I really love about it, and I love your thoughts. Um, you know, it's it's obviously a circle, and there's arrows that it, it's it's never ending, right? And what it really suggests is that comms teams, yes, you come up with your strategies to start, but that you should constantly be doing uh, self evaluation and trying to understand what what what's working, what's not working, and be prepared to. Um, to, to re-strategize if, 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 if necessary. So what's, what's your thoughts on how frequently, you know, how long should it take for an organization to first strategize and then make its way around the circle before uh, revisiting? It, it, it's absolutely, it's it's like this flywheel, flywheel approach, right? So so definitely, and, and uh, you can go through this. Um, we also... Um, I think what it's it's not 100% like a process where you say you have to do one thing after the other. It's more like these are the aspects. Obviously, you won't strategize every day or every week. So you do this, uh, in many cases, people do this on an annual basis. They review it on a quarterly basis and they might do some things and check-ins on a, maybe on a monthly basis. Communication actually happens every day. Uh, there might be some things, especially in communications planning, it's quite interesting how often you do that. There's a discussion going on. There's some pretty new newsroom communication planning concepts that actually where a, a team is meeting really daily uh, to, to check out, especially in integration between internal and external comms. So um, that's, that's an ongoing activity in the same with engagement, like really discussing uh, doing community management and doing uh, also managing the, the comments and the feedback that you have with employees, and optimization is something that I would I would mirror to one side with strategize on a higher level, but the real good teams they do optimization, for instance, on a weekly basis. They they look at numbers every week, right? Um, it doesn't have to be the big numbers, but really what's really going well. What are the topics that are resonating? Where should we do more? Where should we take something, put this on the stage because it runs so well and people are also engaging with it? So that's definitely um, something that you can do a lot more often. Great. Perfect. So the one uh, last thing that you might have realized here on the model, there's a majority that we have, like unaware, opportunistic, managed, and transformative. And we said, okay, now we have the model. 
we can build a majority model out of it and also have a self-assessment that we offer. And that's what we are launching also today. It's available um, from today on. So um, there's a very easy way to uh, go to the website. We will post a link uh, uh, here in a second and do the self-assessment. If you do it uh, pretty much end to end, you take you about 10 minutes um, and the self-assessment uh, and no, Jeff, you're you're scared of tests. Um, <laughs> this the self assessment is it's 28 statements, um, and you just choose uh, to to what uh, degree you are agreeing to these statements. And uh, after that, you get an email with your individual score for those four areas, and you also get a report with much more detail about those four areas, those uh, individual. Um, individual uh, um, content uh, areas in, in the model uh, and a lot of uh, opportunities to actually learn what are others doing and what, what are best practices. So that's going live today. Yeah, and I, I would imagine that this is relevant not just to uh, individuals who have been in the industry for a long time, but also for um, newer uh, professionals who can kind of, I would imagine some of the questions that are asked will give them some things to think about in terms of what they want, what they'll need to learn about as they grow. Absolutely. In the Absolutely. And we've, we've tested this with a couple of customers and the feedback we got every time was like, wow, these are really good questions. And they meant this also in a way sort of, this is sort of not really tough, but it's really, it makes you think, right? You think, right. And it makes you, and the, the other thing that uh, you could also do, you can do this on an individual basis. You can also, if you're a team, you can do this in a team or you can, for the next team meeting, everyone in the team does the test, take your score, bring it back to the team meeting and discuss it there, maybe do it together because it really helps you to kind of look at yourself as a, as, as a team and saying like, how are we doing this? Or we, did we ever think about that, right? And of course, we would love to have your feedback. We are sure there are ways to improve uh, this model even further in the future. And also we will, uh, of course, uh, use the results to try to do some benchmarking. Of course, everything here will be anonymous. We won't share your data anywhere else. We will treat this like every other professional service that's, uh, survey that's out there. So it's really taking the data um, and give it back to community and, and, and say, here's what we learned. Here are the areas that others are doing, right? And maybe as, as one um, other point and uh, next step, if you get the results, if you see there are certain areas that uh, you want to learn more about, um, there is... Uh, Another thing that I'm actually even more excited about is an internal communications masterclass. So we decided let's produce for each of the areas a video, at least one, maybe a, a bit more in the future, um, and kind of show what we think based on our research, what's part of this area, like what is good practice, what are others doing, and what should you understand under this area? Right now, we've released three videos. Uh, you will get the link uh, to them also pretty soon in, chat, in the chat here. Um, so they started off with the setting the goals, understanding your audience, and also creating powerful messages. And was was quite important for us because, to be honest, I maybe as part of the pandemic, I don't know, I, I grew really impatient with things. So I don't watch 30-minute videos anymore. Um, so we said, hey, this needs to be short. Maximum time is eight minutes. So it's between five and eight minutes. And we will try to release a, a video now every two weeks until we have this masterclass complete. It's, uh, I think, also a great way to show this to new team members, uh, maybe show this to management in terms of when you want to say, hey, this is best practice, what we do. Give me more resources about the topic or here's how we should improve our messaging. Um, so we hope that's valuable for you and yeah, really, really looking forward to, to feedback. Fantastic. So um, I think looking at the time um, we have, and I'm looking a bit at the chat, I think we will uh, post links to what we just discussed here uh, to everyone. I don't see them yet, but I guess they uh, will come uh, pretty soon. Um, 
as a last thing, uh, and uh, Jeff, you asked uh, before, like, what's the topic that um, I personally like most here? Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to, uh, yeah, take five minutes to talk about this because I think it's a good example on how detailed we want to be with this model and, and what is also, uh, what are things that we care about? And there's one topic that's a pretty new topic to quite a lot of comms teams. Um, it's new because it, it's also coming up because there are much more channels now flying around and there's more complexity that's going to happen right now. And that's content planning. And it's also quite an interesting topic because it's you don't find too much about this in the literature or in the research. And you also, it's a day-to-day -day struggle for many communication teams. So if you can solve this, it's really, it's really a big thing. Here's the problem. I wanted to uh, discuss this in a, in a minute. So you have employees um, and employees uh, pretty much have a limited brain time and attention capacity like all of us, right? Uh, we all are, are, are employees in that regard, and uh, that's a that's a that's a resource you need to manage. And what's happening in the company is you have uh, messages flying around from everywhere, like from your CEO, from your senior leaders, from projects and initiatives. Unfortunately, in many cases, projects and initiatives have the highest communication budgets. They sometimes bring even in somebody. Uh, from outside to do communication. So they, they communicating a lot, uh, about their goals and initiatives. Uh, you have service functions like HR and IT. You have the business units that are communicating and you have the countries and locations that are communicating. So there's a lot of messages flying around. And it's unfortunately not just that because we all know there are also external messages like from marketing, from social media, from, from the public media itself. All this is there. And all this is coming to the to the employee. And now we have pretty much four challenges. Challenge number one, capacity at the employee side. They will just tune out. And in the worst case, they will go to the content that's easiest to consume uh, in, in, in the worst case, to the videos from social media or somewhere else. They don't have capacity anymore to, to listen or look at any of this, especially if it's long text or if it's boring or if it's, it's not telling a story, right? Second challenge, you have specific messages that you want to get across because it's about your company strategy, it's about your core campaigns that are just one message out in the ocean of all other messages and they get lost. That's a big challenge because there's no way to really prioritize them. Third challenge is you have messages that are colliding because they are telling entirely different stories, right? Worst case is we all know in one department, you have cost cutting. In the other ones, you increase bonuses for top management. Nobody understands this, right? Everyone is suspicious about your plans if things are colliding. Uh, with COVID, one of the classic colliding things is, on one hand, you introduce new rules about mask wearing and having distance. And on the other, uh, somebody posts pictures from a company event with leaders standing uh, beside each other and talking to each other without a mask and other things. So that's all a real challenge that you have. And the last challenge is on the content side. Um, if you create content, um, that's a lot of, in, in many cases, double creation of content. So marketing does it, uh, it the business units do, do it, the service functions do it. Uh, everyone creates a new picture, maybe a new video about the same topic. If you would know things are going on, that would be much easier to do that. And that's a typical struggle of content planning. And if you get this right, right, if you if you actually manage that topic, good content planning works like, I would say, air traffic control, right? All these messages are flying around and external internal comms are well integrated. They know what's going on. They know what's going to happen. And they have this airspace in control. They have a good radar of what's coming up. And they enable all included parties here to actually do good communication and they make sure it's not overwhelming to employees. And that's one example. We are doing a masterclass on this right now on how to do this. What are the methods? What are the tools? What are the roles to actually achieve that? And for me, that's one example of 
the challenges of modern comms. And I would love to hear also your feedback on, yes, that's, we see this as well, or no, we solved this problem. Because if you solve this problem, we would love to have you on a webinar because everyone else has it, right? So just an example, these are the topics that we want to talk about. Uh, and these are, these are the topics where we think that's modern comms, actually. And I think one of the things that's really um, that, that that I'm most impressed with is, you know, obviously this is not Jeff Corbin sitting in New York or Frank Wolf uh, sitting in Germany. It's 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 listening, it's talking, it's it's learning from so many amazing companies, clients, customers of ours to to understand the challenges. So this isn't. Um, you know, we, we 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 know what's going on. We hear it on a day to day basis, and this is part of the um, the, the the effort to want to say give back and and to help and to you know bring us all together to to think about you know what we do for a living, the importance of it, and you know just uh, the value of, of of internal comms to business success and organizational success. So I and, I, th I think it's uh, it's it's I'm I'm, I'm excited about this. And that, that's one example of something we didn't see, to be very honest. Also, staff base, we've done this long. We didn't see it. And it's really came back from our customers saying, you know what? That's my day-to-day -day struggle. How can I solve this, right? And that's why we take this on. That's why we also, from a, from a tool perspective, uh, help to support a lot more to really, really uh, give back control. I don't want to say take back control, but give back control to... To communications here, because especially internal communications struggles with this and needs to solve that that uh, problem. Right. So uh, looking at the time, uh, I think we are already a bit over the time. The last thing I wanted to do, uh, thanks a lot for your attention. Um, we would love to see you taking the majority score. Don't be scared. Uh, it's just 10 minutes. Um, it should be really uh, like helpful, should really also hopefully insightful. Uh, to take the test and watch out for more masterclass videos. And we'd love to to see your feedback, see your comments, and also see um, what else in terms of content, maybe also masterclasses you would love to see. So I'm uh, really excited to, to launch this today. Great. Thanks, Frank. Nice, nice being with you.